Whoa. 2024 is on us, and I've got some New Year's resolutions for you to get you started right in the new year. I can't wait to get into it. Okay, so the New Year's is on us. We want to get doing more professionally. We want to hone our skills. We want to sharpen that ax. We want to do this in a number of different ways. This challenge is designed to get you up and running inside of Microsoft Fabric and do it in a way that uh, maximizes your rewards while minimizing you know, the extra effort that you have to put in. This is going to require some time and energy on your part and a little bit of an investment as well. Don't worry, I'm not making any money off of this. This is all free for you, for at least as far as I go. Uh, but you might have to spend a little money in, inside of here. But this can be a make or break uh, thing that you could do inside your career. All right, so let's head over to my desktop. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to head over to the Microsoft Learn site and you're going to look for the courses on Microsoft Fabric, and you're gonna filter down to the learning path. One of the things you wanna do, the first goal is work your way through all of these all of these learning paths that are out there. Now these do build upon each other, right? So as you complete one learning path, that's gonna show you some progress in these other learning paths as well. So, you know, it's not necessarily gonna take all of the time and energy, but that's this is something that you really should do. What this will give you is it's going to give you a good, solid foundation of the core capabilities that are inside Microsoft Fabric, get you prepped and ready for any certifications, as well as just make sure you understand how these tools work and how they all fit together. This is a new new situation. New tooling can be confusing to a lot of people, okay? So that's, that's the first thing that we want you to do. Next thing I want you to do is I want you to go in and I want you to set up your own uh, Power BI and Microsoft Fabric Tenant instead of Azure. That means you're going to have to go and, and register a domain and create a domain inside the Azure portal. Uh, you're going to have to put a credit card number in as part of that. I'm 99% sure. So you're going to have to first set that up. Then you're going to have to set up and get your own uh, Power BI uh, or Fabric capacities up and running. Right. Really just Power BI. So start with Power BI and start with the PPU trial. Okay, so you can get up and running and working with that. And then once we've started to publish some of the content out there inside there, then you can look at expanding to the fabric trial. If you find that you've kicked off this fabric trial that's up here, no problem. You could that's totally fine. Just go ahead and get started. Move on to that next part of the fabric challenge. Okay. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we want to uh, go in and we want to create your own lake house that you've a workspace that's dedicated to the fabric content to creating your own demo environment okay it's this demo environment that's going to allow you to not just understand what's in fabric today but help you understand what's going to be available in fabric in the future so as new features roll out on a weekly monthly basis whatever it is when you see something that's applicable to you or that you want more information on, you could just head over to the service. You could head into your demo environment and test that out, okay? So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to create your AdventureWorks lake house and data warehouse environments, okay? Um, now, uh, these lake house assets and these items are available on my GitHub repo. I'm going to post a link down below. But go ahead and create from any assets that you want out there. You know, like sky's the limit. Do what you want inside of here. Uh, but this is something that can be real easy to get you up and running. But you want to make sure that you have a lake house that you can go in and you can actually see. Like here, here is my AdventureWorks lake house. That comes with uh, the, the SQL endpoint as well as the uh, semantic model uh, gets created along with that. Okay. I don't want to necessarily just stop here. I want to make sure that this is loaded and I can process this and I, I understand the components that exist inside the lake house. Like I want to make sure that I understand each, each of these tables, like how to open it in a notebook, how to rename all these different capabilities right here. Uh, like, especially like, look at this maintenance. Do you know what the V optimize is? Make sure you understand what this is, right? Make sure you're 
active in going through and creating this demo environment. Touch these things. Make sure you understand these different components, how they work, how they operate. Just going out there and creating it is one thing, but it's really being able to get the value of of all of the work and the, and the capabilities that are out there that's really gonna make the biggest value to you, right? So understanding how they work, understanding what they do, that's what you wanna make sure that you're focusing in on. Don't take this challenge as like, hey, how fast can I burn through this? And ha ha, I got this up and running. Make sure you're actively engaged in the build process. Be inquisitive, ask yourself, why do these things happen? Why do this, how does this work? Uh, and work through these things, touch them, work with them, all of, you know, make sure you understand that. Right? Next thing I want to do, once you've kind of been through and you've created your lake house, uh, I want you to go in and uh, I want you to create your own Synapse Data Warehouse. Okay, so I've got a Synapse Data Warehouse and I've got uh, AdventureWorks Lake House. So I've got my AdventureWorks for both of these, right? The reason you want to have both is so you can understand what the differences are. Isn't, you know, is this really just another view of a lake house? Or what is it that Synapse and the data warehouse components bring to your solution, right? There's pros and cons of both sides. You want to make sure that you understand why you'd want a lake house, why you'd want to have the data warehouse, and the advantages of potentially using both in an environment. All right, make sure that you get these components set up. All right, and then the next thing I really want you to do is work through, if we go under more options here, I'm gonna see all of these different components out here. Make sure that you go through your data activator, set these things up, create a reflex, uh, run through how this works. Use the preview sample feature that's right here. Really easy to do it with the sample feature, right? Go into data engineering. We've created the lake house, uh, but create a notebook. See how that works. Understand what like the environments are. Understand a Spark job definition. Make sure you get these different components up and running. Then go into data factory, set up a gen, uh, gen two, right? See that it's just in alignment with Power Query. See that it's the same thing. There's some different features, toggles and, and whatnot, but go in and play that out. Do the same thing with data pipelines. In data science, I want you to go through and do these as well. Now, again, we're gonna see that there's some overlap in these, right? Like it's not just all gonna be like, hey, I've gotta run through all these different exercises or do all these things. No, like a notebook in data engineering and a notebook in data science is pretty much the same thing. Really the question is what are you doing with it, right? So go through, set those up, and run through each one of those, all right? Next thing, uh, once you go into, well, we've already created the data warehouse. Um, inside of Power BI, I want you to make sure that you not only know what reports, Pagi reports are, scorecards, dashboards, uh, all, all the items that are in our classical Power BI space, but I want you to have a demo of each one of these available so when a new feature comes out, you can go, oh, hey, it's a new feature to scorecards. Let me head over to scorecards and try that out. Or, hey, look, it's a new thing inside of a, a streaming semantic model. This is a feature that would be very useful for me. Let's head over and check that out, right? Let me see how that works, right? And then I want you to go into the real-time analytics and do that exact same thing down here, right? Go in, create a KQL database, uh, go in, run some queries, create an event stream, understand what's going on inside of your Fabric workspace. Now, this is the first part. The next part is gonna require you to head over to portal, portal.azure.com, you're gonna log in, and you're gonna end up needing to create your own Fabric capacity. So I've got a, a couple of them here, we'll head over to Eagle, uh, uh, um, if anyone uh, recognized the Andy Samberg movie there, let me know in the comments down below uh, on my fabric capacities. But uh, um, I want you to go in and I want you to create uh, a, a fabric capacity. And the great thing of the on-demand capacities is, uh, let's see here, like th they cost very little. You can pause them when you're not using them 
and then you you know you, you can incur very little cost right so if i go and look at the change sizes i can see what the cost is on each one of these so an f2 that's 262 dollars a month okay so if I, I if i pop it open my handy dandy calculator and i look at 262 dollars and 80 cents a month divided by uh, 30 days, right? Divided by 24 hours in a day, and we get like 36 cents an hour. Okay, so let's say you wanted to cap this at your $10, $10 a month uh, or $10 a month spend instead of Azure, which you totally could do and get through all of this stuff. That means you, you need $10 divided by 0.365. All right, that means you get like basically 28 hours of compute time on your fabric capacity to get you up and running, okay? So this is where money's starting to come into play. You're also gonna have to have created like a Power BI Pro license or maybe you're still on uh, the free trial. Uh, so there might be some licensing costs to come with that. So let's say that's $20 for PPU and say it's $10 a month for your fabric capacity. That's still not a ton of money, right? $30 a month is not a make or break it thing, but this is going to be radically, or this is going to enable you to radically advance your career and, and look at job opportunities. We had a live stream today where someone pointed out, you know, having your own demo tenant where you can go in and play with stuff can be the deal breaker when it comes to getting a job and more importantly, getting that salary expectation that you're looking for. Okay, be able to say, yeah, yeah, I've done all of these things. I've got my demo intent. This is how it works and operates it can be a lifesaver. All right. Now, once you've got these things set up, the next big thing I want, and this is the last item inside of our challenge, and that is to head over into the settings inside of Fabric. And oopsies, let me head over here, head over to the settings, and then go down to the admin portal. And I want you to go through and review all of the settings inside your Fabric admin portal, okay? Now, this is something that may be incredibly new to you because you're not a Power BI or Fabric admin and you haven't gone through and done these things before. I want you to work through each one of these, understand what does this mean? What does it mean to have Discover content enabled? Heck, what does it mean to your tenant to have this toggled off? What features work? What features don't work? Play with these components. Understand what features are here. Understand how they work. Work through the, don't work through the usage metrics. This is, uh, hey, if you're Microsoft and you're watching this, like this is just uh, kind of garbage. So like, just don't don't bother with this, right? This is, this is nothing. Um, but understand um, what each of these components are. Understand what domains are, right? Like understand the different items inside the admin portal so you could say that you truly understand uh, these capacities and um, honestly understanding how the back end works and functions can really help it help you when it comes to understanding how to work on the front end or work and build in an environment all right now uh, those that is the the fabric microsoft fabric 2024 new year's challenge we went through all of this in our live stream on December 29, 2023. Do check out, check that out. Check out the rewatch on that. Um, uh, but let us know how this went. Please tag me as you progress through this. If you finish the 2024 New Year's challenge, like hit me up. In fact, here's the deal. First person to tag me in the 2024 Microsoft New Year's challenge and can like like show me that you've completed all these items, I will get you your own free uh, No Dax Columns uh, t-shirt uh, and I'll, I'll ship that out to you, all right? So the first person who can demonstrate that you've completed this entire challenge and you're able to speak to these things articulately, hit me up on social media and i love to review it with you, talk with you through it. And then once we've verified it, I will send you your own t-shirt, all right? Uh, thank you guys very much. If you found this useful, make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel. One of my goals for this year is to hit 20,000 subscribers. So uh, i got a little ways to go, but I'm, I'm counting on you to share this with your friends and family. Let them know how valuable this is. Uh, and, and with that, Happy New Year.
Peace. Baker Tilly Digital combines strategic industry insight and advanced technical expertise to uncover and solve your digital transformation challenges. If you're interested in learning more, check out our website at bakertilly.com digital.